what do we do now? Seriously, I'm not kidding. Go back and watch any movie, and you will see this line over and over again. You're going to see it now. I'm telling you. My daughter watched a movie last weekend. She goes, Mom, I heard that line. And I love to ask questions, but it's my most hated question. And I dread reading scripts that have no women involved in their creation because inevitably I get to that part where the girl turns to the guy and she goes, what do we do now? Now, do you know any woman in any crisis situation <laughs> who has... <laughs> any woman in any crisis who has absolutely no idea what to do? I mean, don't they tell women, they tell people in crisis, little children, that if you're in trouble, talk to a woman. It's ridiculous that a woman wouldn't know what to do. So anyway, after I went to visit these studios, I started telling people about this current pipeline and that there was barely any female leads in films and the industry was in crisis, and people were aghast. They said, that's horrible, they said. And then they change the subject and move on to their dinner and move on with their lives. But I could not change the subject. I, I, I couldn't turn to some man and say, what do we do now? This is my life. Okay, I've made movies all my life for 25 years, since I was 14 years old. It was time to turn to myself and say, what are we going to do now? Okay, Reese, what are we going to do now? And the answer is really clear. My mother, who's here tonight, very strong smart southern woman said to me, if you want something done, honey, do it yourself. So I started my own production company, Pacific Standard Films, with the mission to tell stories about women. And I was nervous, y'all. I was spending my own money, which everyone in the movie business always tells you, don't spend your own money on anything. I was warned that on the crazy chance that Pacific Standard would acquire any good scripts, we would never make it past our first few years of business because there just wasn't a market for buying female-driven material. But like Ed Woods, I do not like to be underestimated. <laughs> I am a very avid reader. In fact, I'm a complete book nerd. And so is my producing partner. So we just tore through tons of manuscripts and read so many things before they were published, but we could only find really two pieces of material that we thought were great. And we optioned them with our money and we prayed that they would work. Both were strong, complicated, fascinating women at the center and both were written by women. And lo and behold, both books hit number one on the New York Times bestseller list in July of 2012. <laughs> one was called Gone Girl. <sighs> And the second was called Wild. So we made those two films last year. And those two films grossed over half a billion dollars worldwide. And we got three nominations for Academy Awards for women in acting performances. So that was year one. And against the odds, Pacific Standard has had a year two and a year three. We've bought five more best-selling books. Next year, we're going to make two of those, Big Little Lies and Luckiest Girl Alive, into films. We have over 25 films in development and three television shows. And they all have female leads of different ages and different races and different jobs. Some are astronauts, some are soldiers, some are scientists. One is even a Supreme Court justice. And they're not just good or bad. They're bold and haunted and dangerous and triumphant, like the real women that we meet every single day of our lives. But our company isn't just thriving because it feels like a good thing to do. It's thriving because female-driven films work. This year alone, Trainwreck with Amy Schumer, Melissa McCarthy's Spy, Pitch Perfect 2, Cinderella, the Hunger Games franchise that has made over $2.2 billion worldwide. Films with women at the center are not a public service project. They are a big time, bottom line enhancing, money making commodity. <laughs> ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are in a cultural crisis in every field. In every industry, women are underrepresented 
and underpaid in leadership positions. And the reason we're all talking about it tonight, under 5% of CEOs of Fortune 500 companies are women. Only 19% of Congress is women. No wonder we don't have the health care we deserve, or paid family leave, or public access to early childhood education. And that really worries me. How can we expect legislation with our rights and our needs being preserved if we don't have equal representation? So here's my hope. If you're in politics, the media, the tech industry, working as an entrepreneur or a teacher or a construction worker or a caregiver, you know the problems we are all facing. And I urge each one of you to ask yourselves, what do we do now? That's a big question. What is it in your life that you think you cannot accomplish? Or what is it that people have said that you cannot do? Wouldn't it feel really good to prove them all wrong? <laughs> because I believe ambition is not a dirty word. It's just believing in yourself and your abilities. Imagine this. What would happen if we were all brave enough to believe in our own ability, to be a little bit more ambitious? I think the world would change. Thank you.